top tips for becoming an electrician in 2025. So the first thing that I think everyone should think about is the kind of work that you want to do. Which direction you go in this trade is gonna largely determine the kind of experience that you gain, which is going to matter. The general experience that you're gonna have every day, whether you're gonna enjoy your job or not, is important. So the first thing is the electrical trade is split up into new construction and service. Most of what you're gonna be doing out in the field is either you're gonna be maintaining existing electrical systems, this is the service or maintenance or troubleshooting side of things, never really building any new buildings, you're just kind of going into like a Home Depot because all their lights went out or they, you're going into like a grocery store, Walmart or something like that because all of their produce, all their refrigeration is down and all their food is literally dying by the second. Um, and they need to get all these huge refrigeration trucks in and make sure they don't lose millions of produce or whatever, chicken. Um, but like you're fixing buildings and it's not just these kind of buildings. A lot of times you're just going into a dentist's office and you have to figure out how to get this x-ray machine installed because they're adding some kind of a thing. Like it's a lot of existing structures that you're trying to figure out a problem and solve this problem for these people. Then there is new construction where you're building brand new things every day. So this is all day long, you go in, you're wearing tools, it's a new environment, there's no businesses going on, nobody's conducting business. You're putting up a brand new building, and you're, you're having to wire this whole thing over months and months and months. You spend on one job, or you might have a journeyman that's got like three different jobs around town, so you're with this journeyman in the passenger seat, and you're going wherever they're going. And the same thing with the service side, you're gonna be driving with somebody, but with service, you're probably going to like four or five jobs a day, and they're just different jobs, and you're hitting all this newness constantly. With new construction, it's largely project-based, so you might be on a house, and for a month, you're wiring this house, and then like four months later, when it's ready, they got all the drywall and the paint and everything ready for you, you come back in and you put in all of the devices and you energize the place, and now you've wired this this newly constructed thing. Those two disciplines within themselves are far, farther apart than you would imagine in the skill of the craft of being an electrician. One of them is highly about aesthetics and newness and brand new materials and planning where something is gonna go and how you understand electricity and codes and everything and safety is all gonna be based on the environment you're in. When you're in troubleshooting, you're more often learning about how other people have wired things in the past and you're running up against stuff that you're like, holy crap, this hack over here did this, you know? But you're gonna learn a lot of codes, a lot of safety materials, but you're gonna learn it a certain way. So it's two completely different skill sets that combined make somebody a bomb electrician. So doing both construction and service, I highly recommend that you get into. Now within construction and service, there's these three kind of pillars that we have of types of work you can do, types of environments. Residential, commercial, and industrial. Residential is residences. I reside, I live in them, it's homes. It could be multi-family homes where you're dealing with apartment complexes and crazy stuff like that, or just like single homes. Commercial, it's places where commerce is exchanged. Banks, grocery stores, businesses, right? That's commercial. And then industrial is largely where things are made and constructed and raw materials are formed to make products. So you could be like a residential, new construction, custom home builder, building mansions that are $20 million and this is all you do. And these places are crazy and they need a high degree of white glove treatment and a lot of knowledge about a lot of different things. So it's very possible to get an entire career made out of just doing this one thing. But then there's also all the other things there are to do. And I think that it's maybe better to go and get into residential new construction and residential service and do those together and then go into commercial service and commercial new construction and do those things together and get into some industrial and do new construction and service. If you can get experience in a lot of them and you accumulate 20 years of experience versus you just do one thing over and over and over and over and over for 20 years, you're still getting 20 years of experience. It's just, where do you want to go in your career? What are the kinds of cool stuff you want to work on? And that's why I say figuring out the kind of thing that you think is interesting to do, at least to start out, is really important to consider. The next thing to consider is how you actually become an electrician. Um, you can either go into the union or you can go non-union. 
to get direct field experience working every single day. Those are your two options. There's trade school as well, and I caution trade school because a lot of trade schools don't actually give you hours or they're not accredited. You gotta understand that schools are businesses first. Before anything else, they need money or they don't exist. So if you're gonna go and pay to get an education for this stuff when you don't need to, all you have to do is go in the field and you get paid to learn and make mistakes, kind of seems like, why would you go to school? The reasons you might go to school are A, you have a state that requires that you have to. And just make sure that the trade school is accredited, that you're gonna come out of it with actual hours that you can verify that will go towards your license, that your state board recognizes this school and they allow hours to be transmitted for credit towards your license. And then they actually give you real world field experience at the school. This is key. If I'm a master electrician, I'm hiring somebody, I don't care that you've gone to school. If you've never done any work in the field, you have zero experience, all your school matters nothing. As a master electrician, I want laborers. I want people to know how to use tools and can jump in and nail up a box and run some wire and drill some holes and make me money as a company. So experience in the field trumps everything. I will say that I think the best electricians are the ones that have field experience and then can go add knowledge, add theory and code and all of that stuff to their experience. So I do think school has a place because it, there's a lot of things you can't learn in the field. You learn, take this, go over here, put this in here, over here. But if you're out in troubleshooting and you're running into some weird like fluttering of lights or you've got, I don't know, you've got some like special lighting that you put in and it's doing some really weird stuff, the bulbs aren't working, like understanding what forward phase, reverse phase for LED lighting and understand like, you know, inductors and capacitors and learn about RLC circuits. Like you learn a lot about these crazy things and now you have this body of extra knowledge. Now that you've spent time and have experience with the materials, now you can understand what the materials are doing and why things are working and aren't working. So adding school at a certain point, I think is a really great idea. I just don't think it's necessary for you to enter the trade. So that's just something to think about. School is in most cases not necessary, but it does depend on the state. States like Utah, very specifically, you have to go through a four year apprenticeship and four years of schooling. So during your apprenticeship, you're, you're constantly going to school. Union, you're gonna be constantly going to school. There's some states, like I think Massachusetts, requires like a certain amount of schooling. Um, if you're gonna like get, take a test and get your license, like there's a lot of states that have very different rules, but by and large, most of them operate on just jump out in the field every day and do work. Now, within what I just said, this means, should you go union, should you go non-union? There's people doing great work and people doing terrible work in both of them. They're just different paths up the mountain. I like to say the union's a little bit more of a paved path, right? Everything's kind of thought out for you, very protected guardrails along the path to make sure that you don't slip off the edge. Um, but they make sure you got conveniences. There's like maybe little water cups and tables and people cheering you on. <laughs> you know, it's like a super paved way up the mountain. You still have to learn all the things. You still have to be just as good, but you get a lot of conveniences because they've thought this whole paved path out. The flexibility in your pay is not great because you it's like kind of a ranking system. So you have to earn certain ranks and you could be working with somebody who is at your rank and they're not doing anything they're they're terrible at what they do but you're getting paid the same as them because it's like time in service sort of non-union they call them merit shops so you can negotiate your wages you may not have all the health care and all the insurance and 401k and everything that a lot of these union companies make sure their people have but you get a lot of flexibility in like what you can negotiate for your pay you can work harder than somebody next to you and then go to your boss and be like yo man I work my butt off and you've seen it over the last year and I'm worth more money. And they'll be like, yeah, you are, here you go, here's a raise. You know, it's like you have a little bit of flexibility and negotiability with them. You can kind of sway the direction. Once you start getting a little bit more experience, they're gonna start considering your thoughts and feelings and what you care about. So you might have influence over things. And with the union, it's just not that way. There's like a certain way that unions are structured to operate. And with the whole thing in mind is to protect the worker. So I have no ill will feelings about one way or the other. I think union shops are outstanding and what they offer a worker are fantastic. I've never been in the union. If I could go do things over, I might join the union, at least just for the training portion. I don't know that I would stick through the rigidity of the structure and the politics and all of that stuff. I don't know that I would stay around for all of it, but being in the non-union side of things and having that flexibility, once I've gotten the training, you know, I think I might've just done things a little bit differently. That's all I'm saying. But I think both of them are fantastic ways you just need to get in the trade. 
don't let anybody in any hateful comments sit and call you names because you're one thing or the other. Like I said, there's just as much great work in both as there is terrible work. And talk to any inspector in any state, anywhere, any locality, and they will confirm that with you. Now, tuning in a little bit more to this whole 2025 thing, why I think that that's important to consider is that we have technology available to us to have opportunities in our lives. You can go on LinkedIn and talk to owners of companies. You can go on Instagram and talk to journeymen out in the field filming themselves doing whatever and be like, hey man, I live near you guys. Are you guys hiring? Like the connectivity of being able to find work is so much easier right now. Nowadays, we're so connected in every kind of way. So what I wanna say about this is for a lot of you youngsters out there, things that you put onto the internet never go away. That is the importance of it. When you are older, you realize the error of your ways when you were younger. But I know with your culture, the age of your culture, that online personas are a huge thing in your culture and who you are and who you put out to the world to pretend that you are, the, the version of yourself you want everyone else to see so that you're socially accepted. I get it. I'm not hating on it. What I am hating on is you being not smart with that. If you have pictures of you like smoking blunts and partying and like throwing cats against the wall and you think that these videos are funny, you're done. You're cooked because people like me know that all these things exist and I'm gonna go research you. When I get your application, I'm like, oh, this seems like a good candidate. Let's go check out their character. Let's go check out how smart they are about their presence in the world and how they present themselves professionally to other people. And I go to your Instagram and I'm like, oh, Hell no, it's, you know, or it's like racist memes just down this crazy page or something. I'm not gonna hire you. So think about the connectivity of you being able to go to like indeed.com, monster jobs, like all these different places that you can get hired from. You can go to temp agencies. If you just type in temp agency near me, you can find companies where they take unskilled people in. They might give them some classes and stuff, but they largely try to funnel people into jobs. Um, and large companies will use these pools of workers to try to get employees. You test, you work there for like, I don't know, a couple months, see how it works out. If they really like you, they'll hire you on full time. How to find a job has never been easier than it is right now. Just make sure that your online presence and who you are and how you conduct yourself on the internet, for the sake of the rest of your life, this is important, but for your job, your professionalism, um, this really, really matters. And the last thing that I'm going to say is now that we have all this technology, there are courses and classes, online schooling, videos on YouTube, YouTube University. If you want to learn anything, you can learn anything in the world. Every question that's ever asked by humans is on the internet and probably on YouTube by 50 people who have made a video about a thing. So if you ever wanna solve a problem, figure out how to learn something, go to the internet and figure it out with Electrician U. That's how Electrician U got started. There was a whole bunch of people that were searching for like, how does electrical stuff work? And there were no videos anywhere. And so I just started making videos and now there's a whole thing. And now there's tons of other content creators that are making stuff and teaching people. And so you're getting birthed into an industry right now that actually has a whole ton of resources. And if you are, serious about becoming an electrician or you have become one and you want more knowledge, you may not have access to school or you have access to school and your instructors suck. I'm sorry, it just happens. There's some terrible instructors out there. Come to Electrician U. This is my shameless plug. <laughs> Come to Electrician U. We have a whole learning system for individual people. If you're an electrician and you want to learn more, sign up for the learning system. It's the cost of a Netflix subscription. If you're a business and you have a ton of employees and you want a way to train them centrally in one place, our business version of the learning system is kind of the same thing as the regular one, but you get an admin portal, you get to see who's watching what, you can assign things to them, um, but it's just a way to incorporate school into a business. So keep learning, try to do your best work every day, be safe out there, this stuff can kill you, this can kill people you work with. You just be really careful with this stuff and have pride in what you do and try to grow and push yourself and buy books and read more and learn more and check out Electrician You and all of our stuff on the internet. Love you crazy people. I'll see you in the next one.